Hey peeps, in today's video, we're going to unbox, install, and set up this automatic Z axis that Adam Stack sent to us. So this is the automatic Z axis, the L2 version. So these are instructions on how to get it to work in Lightburn. So it looks like the way this works is it has a limit switch here and this would mount somewhere on here and the limit switch tells it when to stop and that's when it's focused, I guess. So this here is a spacer because the bottom wheel that tracks along this extruded aluminum its head is out a little bit. So this makes it so that you can mount this here. We need to move this out of the way so that we can get to the screw holes. So I'm just gonna turn that. Okay, so everything is plugged in, ready to go. And according to our instructions, all we need to do is press this autofocus button and we should see this thing work. Here we go. That's pretty cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check it with the block that it came with to make sure that we're exactly eight millimeters off of the material. We're close, so there's a little bit of a gap there. So no problem, uh, because the next step for this is programming a macro in Lightburn so that we can use Lightburn 
press a button and light burn and this will autofocus as well so we don't have to use this. But we can also use it to adjust this distance here so that we can get this a little bit more perfect. So let's go do that. So the first thing we'll do in Lightburn is verify our console tab is open. And this is where we can access our macros. In our console window, we'll right click one of the macros and make this our autofocus button. Now we can type in the command that was provided to us in our instructions. And then we can select OK. Now we're going to adjust the height our autofocus provides to be 8 millimeters because what we got when we did the initial autofocus was 8.6 millimeters. Once again, we're typing in a command from the instructions. And the number we got from this command will be the x2 in our autofocus correction equation. This equation is basically telling us to do 4.5 plus our standard height minus the height we got from our initial autofocus. And this step will require us to do a little bit of math. And we can use the value we calculated as the answer to an equation for another macro we'll label depth. Now when we click on depth in autofocus, our focal length should be 8 millimeters. Since it isn't perfect, we'll make little adjustments to the depth value to see if we can get it closer. Now we want to adjust our z-axis settings to move for different engraving passes. Our goal is for the laser module to move down after completing a pass for cutting thicker materials. So following the instructions provided, we want to go to our device settings, enable z-axis, and make sure our relative z-moves only option is on. And now we can press OK. Now we want to go to our cuts and layers. We can double click on a layer to get our cut settings editor. Now we're going to do a little test with this z-axis and we can adjust our settings for this diode laser. Now we're going to do another test project and for this one we're going to do a Z step per pass value of 0.04 inches and we'll have 5 passes.
Okay, so that's it. That's the L2 Smart Z Axis by Atomstack. Again, what I really like about this is it is absolutely plug and play, easy to install and really easy to use. So we programmed it uh, in Lightburn to be able to push a button in Lightburn to autofocus, but uh, without any programming whatsoever, you can hit the autofocus button that is already pre-installed in this machine. This is the A10 Pro V2 uh, by Atomstack. Now, as far as what you can do in Lightburn with the autofocus button is you can adjust where that autofocus is. So this was slightly higher than what we would like it for focusing using our focusing block. So we were able to adjust those settings using a little math in Lightburn to get this to focus to the same point every single time we push the autofocus button or the button macro in Lightburn. So do I think this is a worthy upgrade? I think so. Uh, for the price point, if you already have the A5 Pro V2 through the A40 Pro V2, it's almost as if this machine needed this to begin with. Again, really easy to install and use. So I think it's a worthy investment, especially if you don't like finicking around with focus um, or dealing with the thumb screws and getting that just right every single time. Hitting a button is just so much easier to kind of speed up your process in engraving different thicknesses of material. The other thing that this autofocus Z-axis has allowed us to do, which we haven't been able to do in the past, is the step down after each pass. This step down feature allows you to cut through thicker materials because the focus point gets lowered after every pass. So that by itself is an upgrade in that we don't have a more powerful module here. We're limited in the amount of power that we can put out, but we can change where that focus area, where that power is sent to the material. Uh, and by lowering that, each pass that we do enables us to just cut through thicker material, which is great. So there's the potential here that we can cut materials about four millimeters thicker than we could in the past because of the ability to move this down. I'd like to thank Adam Stack for sending us this L2 Smart Z axis to try out and do a video on to just show kind of the process of getting this set up. We will be using it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if there's any projects you want us to do in the future using the C axis, let us know in the comments below.